and friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and magicbrad.tv. And I've got a new friend on the line, just logged on. Her name is Jennifer Urizo, and I pronounced it right, didn't I, Jennifer? You did beautiful. Thank <laughs> you so much for allowing me to be part of your magic. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So these are kind of fun. I don't do them too long. This is just more of a get to know like who you are and things. So first off, who are you? You married, got kids? You single, wild, and crazy? What's your story, Morning Glory? don't have any kids. I'm uh, in a relationship with an amazing man called Warner. We've been together three years. We live together. And we have a cat who's insane and acts mostly like a dog. <laughs> I had a friend that uh, her, her cat, she named it D.O.G. because it acted like a dog. D.O.G. It says D.O.G. <laughs> I can imagine. We got a little bitty uh, dog. They all have personalities, don't they? They're I mean, that's the whole fun, right? The, the kind of way that they do their life and the reflection and, you know, the love that they give and, and watching, you know, sometimes I look at her and I go, oh my God, you're being so cute. You know, it's, it's that kind of pause of bringing some, you know, consciousness of love into your life and just practicing how to be. I think that's what pets are amazing at. Yeah, when you come home and everything and they're all happy. My wife's not that happy when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is too. She's taking a nap right now, so I won't. I won't say nothing about her. But you're out on the East Coast, right? Are you uh, like Jersey? I am. I'm in New Jersey. I grew up in New York State in Westchester County, and uh, moved here for um, a boy in my twenties. And I've been moving south ever since. And so, you know, I consider myself an East Coaster. I've never lived anywhere but the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've traveled all over the world. So I'm a true New Yorker. I like the, I like the East Coasters because they say what they're going to do and then they do it. Whereas Midwest, very they say action. what they're... <laughs> We're <Yeah>. very action-oriented <laughs> people. Here they got to, well, let me think about it. Let me go talk to my wife. Well, I don't know. I got to research. It's, it's, it's like you never make a freaking decision. No, we were, I was in a conversation with a friend of mine who's working with a British company. And she's like, they're so... I go slow. She goes, yes. She goes, they think about it, and then they come back, and they think about it. And she's like, that is just, I go, that's not East Coast. And she's like, no. <laughs> exactly. So let's, uh, let's learn a little bit more about what your work is. What do you do? What do you do? What do you, what do you promote? What I do is I put tangibility to the soul. So when people have a way to consciously connect to their soul, they can actually move from unconscious or struggle to consciousness. And that allows them to create whatever they want. I really love working with people that I call spiritual renegades, people who aren't going to do spirituality like anyone else. Mm -hmm. And my gift is to help align their voice and their vision. So my people have a big vision, they want to make a big impact, and they want to receive from it. And so we work with their soul and their soul of a business to kind of let go of those things that are in the way and make that happen. So, so that sounds like it resonates real lot with what my wife does, the whole soul connection kind of thing, going going deep. Is what ends up happening is you you know you you got your your true self and then go through life and you start putting stereotypes and beliefs and things over the top of it and you got to dig back inside. So that's kind of what you do is kind of peel back the onion skin kind of thing and kind of get to the remember remember what you used to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I teach people actually how to connect to that essential nature and make decisions and run their life from the essential nature rather than the programming or the patterns. Um, and then really understand what they're doing and putting that energy in everything they do. So I'm all about consciousness. I'm a master intuitive, so I use my gifts there for consciousness. And my job is really, really fun. You know, <laughs> it's, I love when, when people, when we take the intangible, the internal, and make it tangible with external actions. It, you know, I went to school for photography and, you know, way back when they didn't have digital cameras, the best part of that was putting that that film or putting that piece of paper into that developer bag and watching that image come. You knew how it worked, right. but it was still magical. And I think when we tune into our soul, it allows more of that magic to happen and a lot less programming and pain. That's a, that's a great analogy. It's kind of like uh, as you're peeling stuff back, you start getting more and more clearer and clearer and clearer. So that it's like the picture developing. You can start seeing it come into fruition, so to speak. Yeah, it's really Very cool. cool. And, and I think growing up, you know, 
as we're in school and as we're learning and as we're trying to, you know, adult, I think we lose a lot of that internal awareness and internal magic. And I think we do a lot from our heads, which is great. I love my mind. It's really smart. But I want my mind to follow my heart. Mm -hmm. And I think when we do that, you know, we're always succeeding no matter what we do. But when we allow our mind to follow our heart, we're really succeeding in what we want to succeed at versus pattern or pain or suffering or lack or any of those things that we're achieving. We just don't want to achieve. Yeah, like... Uh... My friend Greg Braden talks about that kind of stuff, the, the heart. Is it heart math or something like that? Yeah. Heart yeah. math is great work. And, and it's really important to connect to your heart or your essential nature or your soul or, you know, divinity, whatever. I don't care if you call it a rock and you connect with it. As long as you're leading from that point of consciousness, you can't really make a wrong decision. Mm -hmm. You notice that everything's a miracle and then you start participating more and more in those miracles. Yeah, we talked a little bit earlier about how the, the, the digital stuff in this world, that, that's to me the, the logic. If your brain starts like toggling, is it right, is it wrong? And it starts trying to come up with this logical method of doing things. That's why I think there's a big movement going towards like female entrepreneurship because they're functioning not through the logic of how to make a profit, but how to make a difference. It's Yeah, and they're focused on internal first and then the action. Right. Where masculine energy on crack, I mean, we both need sacred masculine and sacred feminine. Sure. But, you know, masculine on crack is just reacting. It's just determining with the mind. It's not letting the internal awareness sink in mm -hmm. and then take divinely inspired action. And I think the best entrepreneurs are the ones that have a balance of both sacred masculine and sacred feminine. And know how to utilize it uh, for their greatest good because when they do for their greatest good it's in the greatest good of everyone we know whether we need to leave it or not that's why you see a lot of uh, corporations they end up uh, doing I, i'm into the marketing world so they do a thing called cause marketing and they'll always tie with some kind of nonprofit, bigger thing you see these big companies sponsoring these 10ks and marathons and all that and underlying it's a profit business kind of thing but they do it because it strums the heartstrings and it works yeah and it, it's Positive energy attracting more positive energy. Right? Yeah. And, and so it's a way to also put a heart to the company and its people. It's also allowing mm -hmm. that company to, to show how connected they are as a community. And I think the digital age is, is kind of allowing us to be a little, not a little, a lot disconnected in oh, yeah. the way of community. Well, that's why I do these videos like this, where I can actually hear the cadence in your voice and look in your eyes, and it's a lot different than posting and all that kind of stuff. So, that, and and the the ability to be side by side like this and interact and respond to things rather than you know the text walkie talkie back and forth kind of stuff where people they misinterpret what was really trying to be said. Whereas when you got face to face, person to person, I'm all about moving the online traffic back into real life activity. <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> so before I get into asking my favorite and final question, do you want to share how do we get a hold of you to learn more about what you do and your services? You got a website and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, thank you. So anyone can reach out to soullanguage.us. I do a discovery session there where one of your soul languages will be identified. It's my gift to you. Uh, there's so many free audios. There's so many, you know, really good tools and techniques on the site that you can just kind of play around with. And I answer my own email and I pick up my own phone. So if there's something that you want or you don't see on the site, just reach out. So soul, it's S-O-U-L? S-O-U-L language dot U-S. Dot U-S. Got it. And I will put that in the, what I do with these. I put them up to YouTube and put them on blogs and things. And I'll put that link in there also. And then what I do is I share it out to different social media and let people find it. And if you do the same, that would be much appreciated. That's the synergy concept. So here's my yes, favorite I question. I think that in doing that, what I love is when somebody comes back to you and, I, and they go, I saw you, wait, I'm not really sure how I saw you, right? And that, you know, what happens is when you start to share it willingly and freely, it reaches the exact person it's supposed to reach. Well, that, that's exactly why I do these things because then I can promote what you do rather than you pushing your self-serving agenda. <laughs> and it, it's just more accepted that way because a lot of times what happens is people 
they try and get their word out there and they end up sharing things on all these different sites and everything. And if you're a member of all a lot of different sites, you end up seeing it. There's another thing. There's another thing. There's another thing. So you got to spread it out a little bit and reach a broader, broader market. Yeah, when I was in public relations, we wouldn't work with a celebrity that had done two or three different things within a year because it would be like, you're saturated. Right. Like, Nobody wants to hear from you again, right? You know, and yet the human being needs to hear something or see something three or four times before it starts to sink in. So we're so complex. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's really important and I love what you're doing is to help people you know, find the tools that they need to achieve what they want to achieve. Well, my thing is about simplicity. I think a lot of people are making this too complicated. And, and when you say tools, some people are buying all these tools and they're, they're to automate things and all that. You got to get back into the real life of things and share things and, and actually type something in rather than having some robot do it for you. Oh, oh yeah. I kind of, um, I got this email the other day from this woman from this like networking job site. They're like, Somebody recommended you for our site. And I wrote back who? Because anybody who knows me knows that I don't need a networking job site. <laughs> like, I'm like, you can't get away with your little marketing ploy with me over no, here. No, it does not work you that know? way. It's like you have to be totally honest and connected and really coming from the heart and the knowing that you're whole and complete when you market. And that will achieve what you want to achieve. Well, I'm going to ask my favorite question, and the answer is very similar with a lot of different people that I work with, and I can kind of already get that it's going to be about people with you. So the big why. Why are you doing this? Why aren't you like doing a cooking show or being a ski instructor or, or competing in the Olympics? Why, aren't, why, are, you, why are you doing this? <laughs> I, I would love to be a cooking show, but you know, I, listen, I would be doing what I'm doing now if I was a bartender. That's a sucky delivery system for me, but I would. Why I'm doing what I'm doing is for myself and others, I want to alleviate suffering. The only way you do that is by connecting internally and externally and really being conscious. And so this is the perfect delivery system of that. Again, I was doing it when I was in public relations, really bad delivery system for me. But I was the answer girl. People would come from all over the office to ask me questions. I'd be like, well, here's the answer. They're like, how do you know that? I was like, I don't know. Is it true? And they're like, yeah. But so it's really about alleviating that suffering. And, and I'm consciously transparent. I, you know, I talk about connection. I live connection. I breathe connection. Yes, because I want to support people, but because I want to be connected. Sure. The more I study it, the more I ask questions, the more I'm connected. So it's a pure selfish reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. It's because I want to be closer to what I call my higher power, and, and that's God. Yeah. And this is the way I found the best way for me that works. Well, it's not totally selfish because you're doing it with other people. If you're doing that's it true. to yourself, it would be kind of weird. That would be selfish. <laughs> I'm still trying to find myself. You get out of my way. I'm trying to find me. <laughs> so I'm going to get to work on this and beam it up to the universe. And if you could, uh, when you see it, do the same. If you want to stick on, we'll talk a little bit further. Other than that, I'm going to sign this off, put it in the can, and propagate it out to the universe so people can find it. Well, thank right? you so much. I'm so honored. And let it fly wherever it has okay. to go. Okay. Thank you very much. Peace, love, and happiness.